All right, you guys ready for part two on our qualitative observations? We're going to do the demo. <gasps> I fumbled the most important item for the demo. Safety goggles. Got to have these in lab, right, gang? If we have time, I'll do two of them, which would be nice. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it out longhand, and then I'm going to write it again with uh, – abbreviations that I'm okay with because you're going to do this over and over in a laboratory and be like, I'm really sick of writing room temperature, really sick of writing odorless. <laughs> and I'll show you some observations that we can do. So I'll show you the long way and then I'll show you the, and we'll rewrite the observations the short way. So what we're going to do is we're going to mix some lead to nitrate solution, 0.1 molar. And we're going to mix some potassium iodide solution also 0.1 molar and I've already put these into some test tubes right so here's the lead to nitrate solution and here's the potassium iodide solution right now I've got now the volumes aren't quite the same I want to get those the same so I'm going to get rid of some of this and I'm going to pour that out and then what I'd like you to do is practice naming uh, try to describe the lead to iodide yourself first Right. As far as, uh, you know, pull out the qualitative observation handout and then try to describe the potassium iodide yourself. I'm going to try to get these to about a milliliter each. Right. Milliliter is about the size of your pinky fingernails. That's about one milliliter there. This one's a little bit over one milliliter. So I'm going to pause this, dump a little bit of the house and try to get these uh, volumes a little more similar. That a little better for you guys. Those look about the same. So those are approximately one milliliter each. All right, so you can see those. All right, let's describe the first one. This is the lead to nitrate. So if you look at your list, look at your list. You want to do for solutions, amount, clarity, color, odor, temperature, concentration, identity. Let's do them in that odor. So this is approximately one milliliter, right? I approximated it, so let's write that out. This would be in pen, by the way. So let's write this out, or around, whatever you want to say, around approximately, roughly, close to, around one milliliter of, and what's the next thing on our list here? So it says amount and then clarity. So I can see fine detail through that, right? I can see fine detail. I can read words through there, all that fun stuff. So that would be definitely clear. So amount clarity after clarity it says color that has no color so that is not clear that's colorless all right i'm going to show you some abbreviations for that uh you know ideally we'll have them side by side on the same board we'll see but it's a lot of details so amount clarity color odor let's make sure it doesn't smell like pen right so don't be like oh, right so i'm gonna waft it towards my mouth now you do you smell oh that would be odorless. Most uh, solutions made from ionic solids dissolved in there, most are going to be odorless. So colorless, odorless, after odorous temperature. Now, I haven't done anything. It's been sitting around forever, right? So that's going to be room temperature unless I did something otherwise. So it was definitely room temperature. So let's write, whoa, I spelled room incorrectly. That happens sometimes. Now we're going to get sick of writing that, so I'm going to show you an abbreviation RT for that. I'm going to show you C for this, C for that, O for that. It's going to make it real. Now you'll love these abbreviations when we're done. But again, don't use my abbreviations that, you know, if you transfer to Berkeley or Harvard or something, it's like, they're like, what the hell is that? <laughs> right? Make sure you use whoever's being taught at the time. Or if you have a notebook, you'll have these abbreviations on the inside, maybe front cover or the first uh, page saying these are our abbreviations used in this data book, right? So amount, clarity, color, odor, temperature. Now we want the concentration, and that was right on there. That was the 0.1 molar, right? Boop! That's either stated in your instructions or on the bottle. Room temperature, 0.1 molar, and after concentration is identity. And you can either write the formula or the name. I don't care. I think the formula is a little bit easier. And then I like to include whether it was a solid, liquid, gas, or solution. So that's describing 
just reactant number one. Amount, clarity, color, odor, temperature, concentration, identity. Just like the odor here. Amount, clarity, color, odor, temperature, concentration, identity. Do it the same way over and over and over and over. Um, now let's do the second one. And describe reactants, then describe what happens. So this is the second one. It looks the same as the first one. Oh my goodness. That's about one milliliter. Now, we can't start a sentence with the squiggles for approximately, but we can here. So let's say around one milliliter of uh, clarity, right? You can see fine detail through that. So that's clear. It had no color, right? So that's colorless. A lot like the first one, so that's colorless. Let's do the odor. Odorless and room temperature. So let's say odor. They're pretty much the same. You getting tired of writing yet? You'll love the... I'm doing this on purpose, so you hate it. So you like the abbreviations. Ha! Uh, room temperature. And let's do the concentration. That was the 0.1 molar potassium iodide. Room temperature. 0.1 molar potassium iodide solution. All of that is just part one, describing our two reactants. Whoop, whoop. Don't try to do them from the bottle, though, because it can be hard to tell. Try to get them in uh, where you can see them in a test tube or something like that. All right, now part two, let's describe the procedure. I'm just going to rapidly mix these together. So I'm just going to go bloop. I'm not going to do anything fancy. So let's just say we're rapidly mixed. That's as far as we can get. So I'm going to mix them. I'm going to mention roughly how quickly any changes occurred, if I see any. And then we want to describe our products. Color, clarity, odor, temperature, any bubbles, if we see evidence of gas. And then if the clarity changes to something that's opaque or translucent, I'll call my product a mixture. And then what I'll do is I'll tilt this into the light to see if I can see what kind of particles there are. Because a lot of times you can't see particles uh, to start with, right? So I gotta mix them together. I'm not particular about the order between the color, clarity, odor, temperature here. Um, but I do do a separate sentence if I do get an opaque or translucent mixture. I'll do a separate say sentence saying, looking closer, you know, flocculent yellow particles were seen or a blue gelatinous precipitate was seen. Something. So let's notate how quick this happens. La, 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 uh, abadi, 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 oh, hobadi, hobadi, hobadi. What would you think mixing two clear colorless solutions? You would not get that. That, that looked instant to me. Woohoo! Now, I don't see particles in there, but it definitely changed the clarity, okay? So we're going to want to shake this up. Make sure you shake it up. I'm feeling for temperature changes and odor change. you got to do that pretty quick. I don't smell anything. I don't feel any. It's not colder or, or warmer. Now, over time, if you form particles, they'll settle. See how that's, see, can you see the precipitate that settled there? That wasn't initially. This is what we saw initially. So we're going to want to tilt this to the side. Oh, can you see those little particles in there? Yeah, you can definitely see those. So you got to kind of get a thin layer there to get the kind of particles in there. Can you see the little individual particles in there? Do those look like dots? It's definitely not gelatinous, right? It's too liquidy for that. Definitely, you can't say colloidal or um, uh, crystalline. That's going to happen too fast. You see those little particles up in this area here? That's what we're looking at. Kind of hard to do over the video. Those look like tiny little yellow dots to me. And over time, they start coagulating together and clumping in. So all, most precipitates look the same after a couple minutes, right? So you want to do that real quick. So while we do this, I'll let this settle. But those look little like little fine yellow dots. So I'd say like, you know, finely divided or something. Um, so this was instant, right? So they were mixed instantly forming and then so we instantly formed an opaque yellow odorless room temperature mixture because it was opaque instantly forming um, and you could say yellow opaque or opaque yellow doesn't matter to me so let's say a yellow opaque 
Uh, what does it say? Clarity, color, odor, then temperature, but it's not critical to me. A yellow, opaque, odorless. Room temperature, and I'm calling it a mixture. That's my noun because it's opaque, right? If it was clear, I would call that a solution. And when you have a solution, you don't have to look for particles. No evidence. I didn't see any bubbles or anything, so I'm not going to write that. But I'm going to add an extra sentence because I had to look closer. I did not initially see any particles in there. So I'll say looking closer when you tilt it and look in the light or looking into the light, looking more careful, whatever you want to say there. So let's say looking closer, I spelled closer wrong. Notice the, the, the sentence structure, grammar, spelling, hopefully I spelled everything right. Um, and you can say looking closer, yellow finely divided particles were visible, a yellow precipitate was visible, um, finely divided yellow particles were visible. I don't care what color, what color, what order you put those in. I'll say looking closer, I'll go yellow, finely divided particles were visible. Or you could say precipitate. Now I conclude from this that we formed precipitate. And I could look at my reactants, look at a double displacement reaction. I could probably conclude it was led to iodide as well. Now over time, do you see that? You can see you've got a, an insoluble solid, and then you've got a soluble portion. So that's your lead to iodide. This is probably your potassium nitrate here. But you couldn't say that in your observations, right? We don't. We can't conclude. We can conclude that's lead to iodide solid, but we can't say it here. Now, would you agree that was a pain in the keister there? I'm going to erase this, rewrite this whole thing again, but I'm going to put abbreviations instead. Um, and so I'll list up, and I'll just do it as we go. I'm, I don't need to list up all the abbreviations per se, but uh, um, let's redo it. So I'm going to erase this board, put up some allowable abbreviations, and we'll rewrite it. And you'll be like, oh, that's so much nicer. All right, I decided just to list these up for you. And this would be something, like I said, if it's in your, uh, your personal lab notebook, you could put them on the first page and say, hey, if you see this, you can refer back to it. Uh, if you have a different professor than me, maybe they have different uh, uh, abbreviations they like. Maybe they have extra ones, fewer ones. Maybe they won't allow them at all. Whatever. But very commonly, precipitate, you'll see PPT. Very commonly, room temperature, you'll just see RT. We write that a lot, right? Test tube, you'll see TT, odorless O. Um, clear C and colorless C, but can you can you see why C and C could get confusing? I will only allow using C for clear and C for colorless if you do the proper order. So when you're doing like a solution, it's a mount clarity color. So that way you know what stands for what. Right? Um, this is one some people are okay with. I'm, I'm ambivalent about it. Not to, no observable change in temperature or odor. So if everything is odorless to start with and odorless to end with, room temperature to start with and room temperature to end with, which is fairly common um, when you're describing your product, they'll say, you know, forming a, uh, you know, uh, an opaque yellow mixture, nocto, which means no observable change in temperature or odor. Or you can say an opaque yellow um you know, odorless room temperature mixture. Whatever works, I don't care if you want to use Nocto or not, that's irrelevant to me. All right, let's redo the observation that we did for this cool reaction where you can see that, oh, that precipitates really, we got a few particles floating on top, that really settled. Pretty hard to describe those particles if you wait that long, right? So let me rewrite it. And uh, so I'm gonna erase the board and then I'll rewrite it with you in real time. You ready? This would be in pen. We're going to rewrite what we did before, but I'll show you the shortcut form. You ready? So we did, it was about one milliliter. That was the lead to nitrate, right? So we did about one milliliter. And then we did a clarity. It was clear, right? Clarity was clear. Color was colorless. Odor was odorless. Temperature was room temperature. So about one milliliter of, you ready? Clarity. Clear, color, colorless, odor, odorless, temperature, room temperature. Oh, ho, ho, ho. as long as you use the backslashes, I guess commas would be okay too, but backslashes are easy, at least for my class. So about one milliliter, one milliliter of clear, colorless, odorless, room temperature. And you have to do clarity first and then color second to do that. 
That's a lot nicer than writing out clear, colorless, odorless, room temperature, blah. And then we did the 0.1 molar uh, lead to nitrate solution, right? A little bit nicer than what we did last time. And so compare and contrast what we did long form versus using shortcuts. Uh, we did about one milliliter of, now remember the potassium iodide was also clear colorless odorless room temperature. One milliliter of clear colorless odorless room temperature 0.1 molar potassium iodide solution. You can really whip through these pretty fast, right? So about one milliliter of clear, colorless, odorless, room temperature, 0.1 molar lead to a uh, potat, potat, lead to nitrate solution, and about one milliliter of clear, colorless, odorless, room temperature, 0.1 molar potassium iodide solution were rapidly mixed, right? Can't can't abbreviate that. Instantly forming. Right? And we formed the uh, the yellow opaque odorless room temperature mixture. Instantly forming an opaque, no abbreviation for opaque, right? Or did we do yellow first? I think we did yellow. So we'll keep it with this. So color for product, color clarity odor temperature. So forming a yellow opaque. I can do, um, what was after that? Odor than temperature. We could do odorless room temperature mixture. Or you could say, you know, an opaque yellow odorless room temperature mixture. Or you could say yellow opaque mixture, period, nocto, meaning no observable change in temperature. Or those are all good. And then we did looking closer. Um, yellow. Finely divided particles were visible. See how quickly you can do this? Or you can say, looking closer, uh, yellow precipitate, uh, yellow finely divided precipitate was visible in the test tube. You can say TT for test tube. A lot of different variations on that, but the basic guts are going to be the same every single time. Right -o. All right, the only difference, if you did something that had a gas formation, you'd say bubbles were visible, yada, yada, yada. All right, or if you detected a temperature change or something like that. Uh, so pretty straightforward, guys. You can do this.